This edition of Taco Tuesday is the end of summer bounty version. When I say bounty, I'm only talking right now about the bounty of habanero chilies. If you ever have grown habanero chilies, you've grown too many. I mean, they're so hot. They always want to find something that you can do with them because most of the people can't consume all of the habaneros that you get off of one plant and your neighbors after a while see you coming and shake their head. Okay, so even if you go to the grocery store and buy a handful of habaneros, you probably have more than you can get through before they go bad. So I'm going to show you a little thing that you can do with some of your habaneros to preserve them for some time and still have that beautiful habanero flavor at easy access. So the first thing that I did was to roast these habaneros because I'm doing a grilling recipe with you today. So these were grill roasted. I just put them directly on the grill, turned them for about four or five minutes until they were blackened and blistered all over. Same thing with a bunch of garlic, but I did it in the papery husk. And when they get completely cooled off so that you can handle them, that papery husk should come right off. You should be able to peel that off really very easily there. Okay, so I've got now about eight cloves of garlic and 16 habaneros, and I'm gonna put all of that into food processor. If you have one of these little ones, that's, that's the best thing for this, just because it's a small quantity that you're working with here. I'm gonna add to this, this is gonna help to preserve it, about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt so it's going to be kind of salty this is going to be like a little condiment a couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar i like this unpasteurized stuff and if you have it some agave syrup would be really nice to go in there to add just a touch of sweetness to balance out against all of that spiciness and the acidity of that vinegar so put the top on this and then turn it on and what I want to do is to make a kind of coarse puree out of it all. You can determine how smooth you want this mixture. I like to see little chunks still in it. And then that is your mixture that you can then put into a small jar, put it into the refrigerator, and you can keep it for several months. It's preserved with the vinegar and the salt. Okay. So it's got all that beautiful aroma of habanero, which is one of my favorite parts of working with habanero. Okay, so we're gonna go on to this mixture here that we're going to put on some catfish. I'm gonna do a very simple marinade for catfish, a salt over the top of it, and then a bunch of coarsely cracked pepper. I have a small moncajete that I brought back from Mexico that I use just for this purpose, to grind up dry spices. And I just, you never want to pound the, the pestle into the mortar here because you can actually break it. So I'm just crushing it and twisting it. And I want to do this like I would the, the pepper for steak au poivre where you want it to be really coarse on the top. Okay, so I've cracked all of those little pieces now. So we'll put that over the top of this. And then I'm going to spray evenly over the top of it the, uh, some olive oil. Okay, so I like to use the sprayer because it gives me a really even coating over the top of it. Okay. I live right downtown Chicago. I know it doesn't look like it. It looks like I live way out in the country, but you hear all kinds of noises from the street constantly when you're in my backyard. Okay, we've got that on there. I'm gonna take this with me back over to the grill and we're going to grill these. I've got the grill hot now. I'm gonna lay them this peppered side down. I'm gonna make sure that the peppers all nicely in there so like I want it to stick really well and we're gonna let that cook while we go back and prepare the little flavoring mixture that's gonna go with this so I have a cup full of mayonnaise here I like Hellman's if I'm gonna be buying something because I think it has a really nice flavor to it and I'm gonna season it with a little bit of this mixture. Okay, so you have to add whatever it is that 
that whatever quantity it is that's going to be really good for you. Um, I want this mayonnaise to be kind of nice and spicy. So I'm going to give it a, a little taste here. And you get that roasted garlic, that sort of explosive flavor <coughs> of the habanero, which makes it hard to talk. I'm going to take some of the cilantro and chop that up to put into that mayonnaise. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I, you can really tell that I <laughs> that I, I took a good little taste of that. Okay, so cutting up the cilantro in the chiffonade style, the standard way of doing it in Mexico, cutting across the stems and all. With this one, I'm going to just toss the leaves like that so that I can let all of the little stems fall to the bottom. As you can see, they're all right there. Get rid of those guys. And then we'll stir this mixture together. Nice. Now what I'm going to want for this finished taco is a little bit of lime here. So I'm going to cut the wedges of lime and then we'll go back and check our catfish on the grill. I let this catfish cook for about three minutes or so per side and then just cut it up like that when you start to build your tacos. The reason for catfish is that, first of all, it's affordable. It's got nice texture to it. It's got a really wonderful flavor that lots of people like, um, especially if you're buying farm-raised catfish, which most of us will be. Uh, our black pepper catfish grill there on the top of it. Then a dollop of the spicy habanero mayo will go over the top of that. I'm not going to try to kill anybody with this stuff, so I'm going to go kind of light with it. I've got some cilantro leaves to now put on top of that because I like that fresh punch that the cilantro leaves will give to it and as a sort of little bonus here I'm going to grate some zest of the lime over the top of the each of the tacos here that'll add a nice citrusy floral something to it there and a squeeze of lime over that I've been waiting for this. Mm. That's good. 